I'd heard that the road to Tibet was covered by landslide. The guy said, you must walk up the mountain. I cycled to the bridge and hired a couple of porters. Rocks crashed down as we clawed our way up. It was cold and drizzling. Waiting at the immigration shack, Mr. Wong said, So sorry, Mr. Pat. Tibetan government has denied your request to cycling. I was angry. Then he said, Oh, Mr. Pat, don't look. An American has died. Porters carried a body on a litter. His eyes stared at Tibetan skies. His mouth was open, catching Tibetan raindrops. He looked cold. My anger melded to thoughts of the impermanence of life. Everest Hotel. On this mountain from the hotel we can see, looks like a protective wall, rampart for a uh, monastery that's on the other side. Here comes the road grader. Seashells at 14,000 feet were so rare that they were used as money back when. I asked this lovely lady to blow through it. She thought it was nuts, but tried anyway. Mr. Wong made fun of these devoted during the golden wheels. I scolded him. Then he confessed, My mother is Buddhist. She prays that altar hidden in our house. Prostrating with one's face on the ground demonstrates submission to a higher power. I love to watch these two little guys. They were more interested in me than Buddha. Maybe they thought I was a higher power. Basic agriculture. How many generations have used that wooden rake to move the straw underfoot while a boy shoes the cattle around, separating it from the grain? Mr. Wong, why are there bullet holes in the Dalai Lama's car? Shoot. Yeah. Maybe it's Red Army? This is the Dalai Lama's home, if he could live here. Faithful walk the righteous path, asking tourists, Picture Dalai Lama? Picture Dalai Lama? Later. Later's come. Yeah. We thought they said be there at 10 a.m., so we rode a pedicab. I took the driver's place and pedaled. We laughed and joked, and we arrived at 10.15. The monk admonished us and told Mr. Wong, you are too late for tour. I was upset and made a scene. Mr. Wong negotiated. What we got was much better than a tour. We accompanied the monks as they filled the lamps with yak butter. We saw places unseen by most, including the throne room of Dalai Lama. One mischievous monk handed me a human skull with a silver jawbone. A wondrous experience on my last day in Lhasa.